Sierra. Uh, she's a wonderful person. Amen. You know, I say person. She's a wonderful first lady to me. She's not only a daughter that has compassion with me when I'm going through, you know, these old people stage. But I thank God that she know, um, I praise God for because she's, you know, through the years that I've been here in Plant City with her and Elder, I have not only learned to be humble as a mom, I've been humble as a vessel of God, as a humble as a saint, and then, you know, I learned to go higher in God by letting God, you know, shut my mouth. And I thank God for that. Um, and I thank God for her, you know, um, she's a wonderful mother. She's real compassionate. I mean, not only with, I've seen her, you know, raising, you know, her niece and nephew. So, I mean, sometimes when I get frustrated with her, she'll sit there and, you know, I'm going to go, you, you ain't doing it right. You know, I know I got eight kids. I know. So I give God the glory. That, you know, through the years she had, not only, you know, she grew to become a mother herself, she grew to become a spiritual vessel. She's been molded and shaped the way God see fit for her, you know. And and I praise God for that, you know, because not only has she been, you know, in that form to let God use her, but she's become in that form to be a good wife, you know, so, you know, she can be humble and a husband. I thank God for that. Because, like I say, I learned. You you can learn a lot from your children. When you don't think, you, you think you got it all together, you a mom, you got it all together, you can tell them, oh, you can't. You know, because once God started creating a vessel, and he got something that he wanted to be done in that vessel. I don't care how old you are, you don't have to be humble Amen. so God can bless you. And she has it in that vessel. And I give God even much glory to you. know, some of you don't, don't know her and haven't got a queen scripture on tonight, Isaiah 10 and 20 through 21, hallelujah. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant shall return even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God. For through the people Israel be as the sand for those 
the people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even the determined in the midst of all the land. Hallelujah. So as we can see when reading this scripture, I, I, I had to admit, I told Sister Shepherd, I said, it's a tough one. And she said, well, it was tough for me too. I said, well, you're a veteran, so I don't feel so bad. And, you know, I was talking to her and I said, Lord, I, I, I just don't know because I, I just couldn't, I just wasn't getting it. And I, I kept hearing God. The kids were watching TV and I kept hearing God. They had this, this, this song that plays on one of their little movies, The Lorax, and the song was uh, Let It Grow. Let it grow, and I kept hearing let it grow, and I was like, well, what does that mean? But you guys will understand later as I go on into the topic. But from this scripture, reading of the scripture, you can plainly see that God, God is coming for a remnant. A certain group of people he's coming back to get. Those who remain, who have been steadfast, who have did all they can to live the life that God has placed for us to live. The, the, the example God left. Hallelujah. But who exactly remains? I want to go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 real quick. <clears throat> hmm. All right. Yeah. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Keep, keep going, Sister Sean. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And also the book of Romans, if you go with me to 1 and 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. Amen. So we see right there that the unrighteous. Now he named that unrighteous. I'm not going to do it because the Bible do it for us. So either you on this side or you on the other side. There's no in between. Hallelujah. Some of us are still here in the church, but we're not part of the remnant. We just remain. He, he's coming back for some that remain, but some of us are not part of, part of that remnant. We just here. You just remain. And that's where you're going to be when the rapture comes. You're going to be of the remains from the remnant. Hallelujah. Now, our, the question is on tonight, are you in it for real? Or are you one of the people that every time somebody see you, and they be like, how you doing, sis? Oh, I'm just making it. I'm barely making it. God is blessing, though. You know how it's, you, they said last night you got to get all the bad out before you hear the good. Oh, you, some of us are like that. But instead of giving God the glory for the trials and the tests, how you doing, sis? Oh, you know, it's been hard. My back, my neck, but you know God going to bless me. Instead of saying, I give God the glory, I'm making, I'm still alive. I'm here to see another day to give God the glory and keep going on about your way. Hallelujah. Amen. But some of us are barely hanging on. We're going to separate the remnant from the remains on tonight. Hallelujah. Has our love for, for our righteousness superseded the love for God, even though God said our righteousness is as filthy rags. But we get so caught up in the church, and we get so caught up in going and being about church and going to prayer and going to Sunday service that we start forgetting about God's righteousness. You know, you can be in church so long that you'll forget about what God wants. Amen. I've been here long enough to tell you. Amen. Do we point more than we pray? Amen. Do we act before we examine our own Amen. self? Come on now. Let's do a self-examination on tonight, ladies. Amen. Just as in the natural, certain things that the doctor tell you to examine, you can do it on your own. We, we, I ain't going to go into details because we all know what that is. It's the same thing in the spirit. God gave you a way to check yourself on your own. Because right, the Bible man. says, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. the Bible says, let a man examine himself. All right. Now, the doctor has special tools to see things that we can't see. But at the same time, so does the man of God. But there comes a time where you got to see yourself. If you want to make it, you got to see yourself. The Bible says, judge yourself. So you got to check yourself. And my thing is, 
what I was getting at with the movie, they were saying let it grow because we all started out as a seed. We all we all understand that. You all start when you came into the church, actually even before you came to the church, you started out as a seed. When you was born, technically you was a seed, but I'm just saying, you, you started out as a seed. The environment you placed in determined whether or how your seed would grow. You were watered, you were fed, and you received all the light you need when you came to the church. That's when all that started. Let's go to Mark 4 and 2 through 8. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up, and some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some a hundredfold. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You see, you have different seeds. Some grew with no root. Some never grew. Some of them left when the trials got too hot, the sun scorched them. But then there was some, my favorite, that fell among thorns. Mm -hmm. They were still there, they were growing, but they was being choked. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, mm -hmm. Lady Sheffield had came and I was told to bring some oxygen because some of us being choked. We in the church, we, we here, we in the remains, but you're not of the remnant, you're being choked. Mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're sprouting, you're growing forth, but you ain't bringing no fruit. You should know a man by his fruit. Where's your fruit? When somebody hear your name, we always ask the kids that at Bible way. What comes along when people hear your name? Wow. What's attached to the back of your name? Is it about your clothes? Is it about your hair? Is it about you being at that altar? You here, so why not be a part of the remnant instead of the remain? Why waste your time? We're being choked by the cares, the people, our attitudes, our personality, rebelliousness, stubbornness, all this stuff is just choking us out. Oh. Wickedness, pride. And we see back in Romans 1 and 29 that the things of the unrighteousness, we know what's choking them, but what's choking us? Because our, our thing is, well, I'm not getting drunk every weekend. I'm not, I'm not fornicating, some of us. I'm not committing adultery. My Lord, my Lord. I'm not smoking weed. But what's choking you? Because mm -hmm. you can't get nowhere. You're, you're, you're not producing. Mm -hmm. you just you just stuck. Mm. Some of us think we're we, we just standing here. And we think we're part of the remnant. We're like, oh, God coming back. But you're not. You're you part of the remains. You're going to be left over. You know, remnant and remains is two different things. Remains is part of the remnant. That's left after he take the remnant. <laughs> My God. Thank you, Lord. We sprouting because that's what seeds do. You put a seed in the ground, it's gonna grow. But it it ain't got to bear, it ain't got to bring no fruit forth. It can you know a seed can grow and not bring nothing forth. Some of us refuse to let go and produce, just as the fig tree did, and God cursed it. It was there, but it couldn't produce. Hmm. So don't think just because you're still in the church and you doing this and you doing that that you're doing good. My because Lord. you could be cursed and withered. Amen. Just because you're standing, wow. just because you're moving and you're breathing, that don't mean nothing. You could be cursed. You ain't bringing forth nothing. Mm. My Lord. You think because you can get up and sing a good song, sing a solo, do a good dance across the floor, mm. pray up here for three hours, Jesus. fast 21 days, go to 21 night revival, oh. and the pastor give you compliment about your good food you just cooked, you think you are right. Not so. Are you part of the remnant, the remnant on tonight? My God, yeah. Some of us just as dry as the, the valley of bones that Ezekiel spoke to. We just dry. You withered up. Ain't, ain't nothing coming forth. We become stiff-necked and haughty. 
And it's just, it's, it's some of us, gonna, it's going to take seeing ourselves before you can start getting your seed to grow the right way. I, God said their belly shall be their God. Some of us, our own belly have become our God. Mm. That's your pride. That's your wickedness. That's your deceit. That's your maliciousness. That's your, malici your um, manipulation. God said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, not rivers of leaking gossip. He said you shall speak with new tongues and in his name cast out devils. He never said to have the tongue of a serpent casting people out of the church. You around here backbiting and think we don't know about it. The thing about, the thing about people that's hiding, that's not part of the remnant, everybody see you but you. That's the strange part about it. You think you got people fooled, but you wither. You ain't gonna walk by no withered fig tree and you see the healthy trees and that one right there. You, you, you gonna see it, it's, it's withered. It's no good. But I'm not here to bash y'all on tonight because some of us did lose our way and we don't even know it. Some of us have been sidetracked by the hustle and bustle of the church life. The things of the world, the things we've been through, experiences, encounters, shame, guilt, anything could have messed up your seed from when it was planted. Mm. My thing is, when you have a seed growing, even from a, from a little baby, the seeds begin to grow, you really don't, you, you can't, as a child, we couldn't control our environments. We couldn't control what we grew up around. We couldn't control the things we went through. I'm the youngest of eight. And me and my, my sister, back there, Sister Liz, is, we're six years apart, and there's three boys in, in between us. I didn't get played with, so I learned to become isolated. And I was okay with it. I, 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 I like being by myself. But when I came into the church, God had to dig that seed up and plant it somewhere else. So when I find myself sitting on the bench sometimes by myself, I get up and say, oh, I need to be watered. Hey, Sister Christine, how you doing? Because I know I can't make it by myself. I understand my seed has to be watered. I understand that my seed needs to grow. It's not going to sprout when I'm sitting there by myself because I need somebody else. And we don't understand that we need each other. Your seed can't grow without fellowship. But we'll get to that later. But some of us, the problem with our seed, it's not that stuff happened to us in the church. A lot of things do happen when we come to church. A lot of us do get church hurt. A lot of us do get, you know, get into things. You know, everybody went perfect after they received the Holy Ghost. Some of us did fall backwards. Some of us did mess up. Amen. But a lot of us got into things way before we came into church that messed up our seed. And the thing is, when we come to the altar, we didn't let it go. So I'm walking around. Yeah, the memory is still there. But the Bible said, forgetting those things that are behind. Right. Hallelujah. We're forgetting those yes, things. Yeah. So why are we still holding on? We got stuff that way back from mama did to me when I was nine years old. And I hear Elder preach about it all the time. You got to let it go. He said, God done healed you of it, but you're still living with the pain of the memory. But God done healed you. You're, you just got the scar that you keep looking down at. You got that scar that's still there. And every time you see that scar, you want to look at it. Oh, she did that to me. That's what's hurting you. See, and then it causes your seed to kind of kind of waver and not do the things that it should. Our roots have been wrapped around the wrong thing. When we, when we come into the church and we come in already messed up, your roots are already wrapped around the wrong thing. So some of us need to go back and ask God to uproot us and plant us in him for real. So that we can get a real root in him. Because some of us are here, but when you hear yourself going, looking back all the time going, you know, Lord, I love a lot of stuff in the world. Because I used to do it all the time. I say, God, you know what? I love a lot of stuff in the world. And it may sound strange, but my mom can tell you, when I moved down here to come to Bible Way, I love school, I love job, I love everything. I love college, I, I just love it. I just packed up my little Saturn and moved. They didn't know what was going on. I didn't, I didn't even, I couldn't even tell you to this day. But a lot of us looking back because your seed is not rooted in God. When you, when you look back to see where you come from, your seed ain't rooted. Your, your, seed, your seed rooted where it was. That's why you keep looking back that way. Because it's back that way where you was 10 years ago with Charlie. 
That's why you keep looking back. You married to John, but you keep looking back to Charlie because your seed rooted with Charlie. So we need, some of us need to just start over and ask God to uproot us. We need to ask God to just start us over. Give us a new seed. Because some of us can't live with the old seed because it's done been through so much. It's raggedy. It's torn. It's beat up. The leaves done been plucked off. We can't live with it. We need to ask God to give us a new seed. Yeah. Not all flowers and plants live. And not all of them need water and food every day. But I guarantee you the ones that don't get water and food every day aren't as strong. Yeah. So you can go without prayer. You can go without fasting. But you ain't going to be as strong. Yeah. So you, you, you got to look at all these things about the seed. I'm trying to hurt. Put it all in there. You, if you ever know, I had I have a lot of flowers. I've had a lot of flowers. Let me rephrase that. And my mom would come over and say, what's wrong with it? What do you, you mean, what's wrong with it? Don't flowers look like that? Ain't nothing but a stem. Well, maybe the, the flowers going to grow out later. And I'll wait like three months and, and it, it won't do nothing. So I just throw it on the back porch. I got like four or five plants on the back porch that ain't went nowhere. But what had happened was I would forget to water them. Mm -hmm. go, some of them can go about three or four weeks without being watered, but eventually they die. That's right. And some of us think that in this church life, you can go about three or four days without praying. You can go about four or five weeks without fasting, Come but on. you're dying. Come Your on. seed is dying. And we hear apostles talk about the seed all the time, but you don't understand the realness of your seed. Your seed is dying. You're not praying. You're not, you're not doing what you need to do to get next to God. Your seed is dying. Amen. If God given the, given the increase and you're not getting next to him, how's your seed going to grow? He's the one that's going to get an increase. He's the one that's going to sprout you up. But if you're not praying and getting yourself where you need to be with him, and you're getting mad all the time and, and running away from the gospel, trying to hide because of your trial, how your seed going to grow? You're not rooted. You're not planted like you need to be. It's going to be hard to go with the remnant if you're not ready. I need to be part of the remnant. Can somebody say that on tonight? I want to be part of the remnant. Lord, let me be part of the remnant. That's why I put it on the bottom of the program because that's all I heard God kept saying is the remnant and the remains. I want to be part of the remnant on tonight. Hallelujah. I don't want to be left over from the remnant and be part of the remains because I want to be in this thing for real. If I'm going to do this and I'm going to run for God, I want to be for real. I want my seed to be planted. I want it to be strong. I want it to be firm and turn into that tree that some talk about planted by the river. Hallelujah. I want to root up in God so strong that don't nobody even recognize me. Hallelujah. I want that glory that Moses had when he came off the mountain. Hallelujah. That's the kind of seed I want. But some of us got to realize that it's, 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 it's so much hustle and bustle in church life that you don't, at, when I first came in, I think I had an encounter with someone. They're not here now. But I had an encounter with someone, and I'm pretty sure half of us have. And you look like, you've been in the church how long? And the, and the sister went off on me. And I'm not going to say what the issue was about, because it was a personal issue, and she shouldn't have went off on me about it. But the sister went off on me. She and I and I looked because the sister I, she was one of my mentors when I first came into the church, and I couldn't understand. And that thing broke me. And what it did to my seed was it made me start looking at church people different. It took Sister Coward to bring me back around. Because after that, I, I, God sent me to her. But it, it it destroyed my seed. It did something to it. It plucked a leaf off. And see, that's what some of us got to do. We got to get back to God. You got to find yourself around the right people. You have to find yourself the right group of people. Young ladies, this hanging out, these boys, these things y'all call young men, that young thugs, don't let them on your seed. Because really, you, you really only get one. And you're going to regret it. If you let them ruin it, you're going to regret it. Don't let them ruin your seed. Because once they, once they get that seed, that's what your heart gonna be planted. Right. And God don't God don't want nobody to have it but you until it's time for I'm at him until it's time for your husband. Amen. Young girls, don't get lost. Don't don't get fooled. This is your seed. You only get one. Amen. You can ask God to give you a new one, but it's always gonna be there. That's something that don't leave. Amen. Amen. In my closing, I told y'all I'm gonna be before y'all long. 
I just want to I just want to encourage you if you if you're dealing with issues get to the altar if you know there are things that you need to be uprooted in you if there's something that comes to your mind every time the pastor preach about someone about somebody doing you wrong with a certain person pop up that means it's still there get to the altar so God can do something with your seed so that your fruit can be produced right so that you can produce something without gossiping, without maliciousness in your heart, without thinking about it in your mind. Because if you get to a place, sometimes you can't even sleep because people be on your mind so heavy because your seed is ruined. You don't want that. You don't, you don't, you don't want nobody else growing your seed but God. And if somebody on your mind that heavy, that means they growing your seed. So you're going to have leaves that look like Johnny Face. And you don't want that. And that, that, I, I'm, I'm serious because I've been here and people don't understand that when your, when your spirit gets weak, your seed messed up. That's it. You can't sleep. You can't eat. Hannah was bitter. But her, her soul became bitter. Her seed was messed up. Something messed her up. So what I just, I just want to encourage everybody, to, if you got that problem, get to the altar. Because a lot of us as church people, we tend to look over things. We tend to keep going. We t can, tend to keep praying. We tend to keep singing because that's what we do. That's what Bible Way know. Y'all know we, 21 Night Revival, we ain't, we ain't trying to hear nothing. You know, this year, Pastor preached on us. But we ain't trying to hear nothing about that. We ain't trying to see ourselves. But sometimes it takes you getting to the altar asking God to show you how your seed is sprouting. Show you, and if you want to know, look at your fruit. Just like I said earlier, look at your fruit. What's your fruit? Ask the people around you how you are. Sis Coward told us to do a survey in the women's department. I ain't done that yet. But um, ask people how you are. Ask them what they think of you. Ask them about your personality. And you'll find out what kind of fruit you're producing. My girls in the class say all the time I'm mean. I say, no, I'm firm. They, they say I'm mean. I say I'm firm. But I, can, I, I guarantee I can go to them and get, get the realness because I'm with them all day. You want to find out what kind of, what, ask, your, ask your, the, the little boy you're hanging out with, ask your boyfriend. He'll tell you what kind of seeds you're producing. <laughs> Don't be part of the, the remains, be part of the remnant on tonight. Hallelujah. And I do have something to show, to give out. But God bless you all and pray much for me and my family. Amen. Amen.